This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE2301 statics. We've got a rigid body equilibrium problem in 3D, and we've got a rigid bar supported by two cables, BD and CE, and a ball and socket joint at A. Well, the ball and socket joint doesn't create any uh, moment resistance, so it's just three forces. So I've shown the free body diagram here. Um, just with AY, AX, and AZ reactions there, I've got my cables represented as vectors, TBD and TCE, and then I've got a 250 pound force applied halfway between those two points. Here's all the dimensions and everything. Okay, so the first step is to do a good free body diagram, which I've got right there. The second is to get everything in Cartesian format. This is just in general for these 3D rigid body equilibrium problems. I express TBD, tension in that cable BD, as a Cartesian. Do tip minus tail coordinates. Works out to be these three components in the I, J, and K. Same thing for the tensioning cable CE. Do tip minus tail for the coordinates, divide by the square root of the sum of the squares, and get these Cartesian components. Now I'm going to be doing moments about A to eliminate all three of those forces. So I need position vectors from A to each one of the points of where I've got a force applied to the cable. Points B, I've just called this F, and point E. So my position vectors are um, along the y-axis, which is what the bar is along the y-axis. So here I've just drawn them kind of below my free body diagram to not clutter that up too much. And they're basically just the coordinates of the uh, points of attachment of the cables and the forces. Um, once I've got those, I'm ready to start solving a sum of moments equation. And there's three forces that cause moment about point A. The tension in cable BD, the force itself, 250 pounds, and the tension in cable CE. Each one of those is a cross product of the position vector with the force vector. So here is written in a, a vector math format, the cross products, those three. That represent those three moments. I evaluate those three with the determinants, which look like this. The moment due to BD, the cable, the tension in cable BD, is just a determinant that looks like this. The moment due to the force, 250 pound force, looks like this vector, this determinant. And the moment due to the tension in cable CE looks like this determinant, which is just the cross products written out as in determinant form. I evaluate them. For instance, I, the component of the moment in BD, I'm just going to collect them in columns because I like this because I can kind of see what's going on if I have it visually represented to me like that. For I, it's just 4 times 0 0.408 TBD minus 0. So I've just done all the math, written all, evaluated all these de determinants in this way. The K, which ends up being very important is K0 minus negative 0.816 times 4 gives me this value positive 0.3.266 evaluating this one's real easy only one that really counts is the 6 times the negative 250 and that's in the I direction Got zeros there um, moment in the CE about CE caused by CE is this Determinant, evaluated out like this, just doing the determinant math. I'm, in, I'm noticing that I've got zero in the Y column. Why is that? Well, that's because all forces pass through the Y axis, so they create no moment about the Y axis. I've also got a zero out here in the K column for the force itself. Why is that? Well, it's because I got a 250 pound force in the K direction or negative Z direction and it's parallel to the Z axis so that creates no moment so that explains that zero. Okay, 
Here I have two unknowns and one force, but here I have two unknowns that I can equate to each other. But this is the sum of the moments in the z direction. So I've written it out here in an equation form so I can evaluate it, and I come up with 3.266 TBD minus 1.823 TCE. I rearrange and I solve for TCE in terms of TBD, 1.791. Then I go over to the sum of moments in the x direction, which is this column, and write it all out. Substitute in for this term here, 2.735 TCE, this value, which I got for TCE, is 1.791 TBD. Do the math, do all the uh, rearranging, and I get that the force in TBD is this 1500. Um, foot-pounds, moment, divided by 6.531, so TBD is equal to 229.6 or 230 pounds. Once I know that, I'm home free, just got to do all the math. TCE is, like I said, 1.791 times that, or 411. If I do the sum of forces in the Y, I kind of have to, I'm kind of scattered around. I have, but all I've got in the Y, I'm looking back at my free body diagram for reference for the Y forces. I've got the AY force reaction at the ball and socket. I've got the Y components of both of those vectors, the, the, both those cables. So I look up here, the Y component of TBD is this one, 0.408 negative. And for CE, it's 0.912 negative. Let's write that all out, plug in the values that I just saw for TBD and TCE, and I get that AY is 469 pounds. Positive means it's positive. And note that I forgot to say up here, I want it's a good idea to assume your reactions in the positive direction. Then you know what your answers are. Look at this real quick. I want to see if this makes sense. It's positive out because I have the two cables pulling the rod back towards the uh, origin, so this force must push and resist it. So that sign makes sense, and the magnitude looks about right. Sum of forces in the x direction, look back at my free body diagram, all I have is AX plus the x components of TBD and TCE, which I just get from here, 0.816 and 0.228, plug in the known values, and I get AX is equal to 93.6 pounds. Okay, was there an easy solution to this? Well, kind of. Um, the only thing creating moment about the z-axis is the x component of these two cables. This force creates no moment about the z-axis. I don't know if I just said that right, but anyway, z-axis moment is what I'm looking at. And I have these two only the x component of these two forces, or the forces in these two cables, creates moments. So those kind of offset each other. The, uh, the y component of these uh, cable forces passes through the y axis and it passes through the x axis, so they create no moment about that. And they pass through the z axis and the only so the only thing that creates moment about the z-axis is the x components of those two cables. And it's times that di y distance, either 4 or 8. So that's what these numbers are. The x components times the y distance. So I equate those and I get those values. I've no, already talked about why I have no moment about the y-axis. And then the moment about the x-axis through that point is only created by those components of uh, the cables and the force itself. The force itself is obviously 250 times that six foot distance. So the answer kind of all makes sense. It wasn't really a shortcut. Sometimes you just got to plug the numbers and look for the patterns and solve the problem.